Are you going on a longer trip to Europe and have decided that you are going to pack a carry-on only, but now you're struggling to figure out how to actually pack that carry-on? You're in luck because in this video, that's what we're going to break down. Hey guys, and welcome to K-Rock Collective. My name is Kim, and on this channel, we talk all things travel. I just want to give a quick shout out to a subscriber who left a very sweet comment on one of my videos requesting this video. She's going on a six-week trip to Italy, and she wants to pack carry-on only. However, she is struggling trying to figure out what what to take, what not to take, what to leave behind, and how to make it work. So thank you, Lily, so much for leaving your comment, and I hope that I got this video out in time. You may or may not be in Italy already. And kudos to you, girl, because I find that longer trips can be harder to pack for, especially carry-on only. And honestly, if I was going to Europe for six weeks, I don't know if I would pack carry-on only. So kudos to you, pretty challenging. So shout out to you for trying and getting it done. So I have made a video about packing carry-on only and I just wanna say some of those tips and things that I mentioned in that video will apply here. So if you have seen that video, you may hear me repeating a couple of things. However, there are some different tips that I think would be very helpful for packing a carry-on only, especially for travel to Europe. Also, I wanted to let you know, guys, if you're looking for a little bit more guidance in packing your carry-on only, I have created a free printable travel packing checklist that I will link in the description box below. You can download it, print it out, and use it while you're packing your carry-on. That way you can make sure that you're not leaving anything behind, you've got everything on your checklist, and you are good to go. So definitely feel free to use that as a resource if you need a little bit more help. So before we even dive in and get started, I gotta do a little light travel housekeeping, and that is talking about the rules. So there are three very important travel rules that I think are really crucial and essential when we're talking about packing for a carry-on only. So the first rule is the 311 rule, also known as the liquids rule. So liquid rules in Europe regarding bringing liquids onto your carry-on baggage are very similar to the liquid rules that we have here in the U.S. Because when these rules and regulations were created, they were created on an international level by the International Civic Aviation Organization. The creams, gels, aerosols, and paste are all considered liquids according to TSA. And yes, that includes nut butters. The 311 rule basically states that all liquids cannot exceed a 3.4 ounce container, 100 milliliters. Now all of your liquids must fit inside a one quart size zipped clear bag. And every passenger gets one bag, hence the rule 311. One. For more information on rules and regulations regarding liquids, I will link TSA's website in the description box below. So the second rule that I think is really important to know is a little bit of a newer rule, and this is what I'm calling the food rule. So this rule was rolled out by TSA in 2020 in response to COVID, and this has everything to do with bringing snacks for the airplane. In the past, it used to be that as long as you were adhering to that liquids 311 rule, you could bring snacks on the airplane and you can pack it any way and anywhere you wanted. So that meant you could bring on your carry-on luggage and your personal item, but that is not the case anymore. Now all of your food must fit inside a clear plastic bag. Bag. And then that clear plastic bag must be put in one of those gray or white or blue bins as you go through security. If you've got sandwiches, granola bars, candy, you can bring all of that and that's fine. You've got to pack that inside a large clear plastic bag. When you're going through security, you've got to then take that clear plastic bag out of your luggage, put it in a bin, and then go through security. This rule is very important if you're traveling from the US to Europe. So Europe has slightly different food laws. I don't know if some of those have changed in response to COVID. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out your airline's individual rules or any airport rules within the EU or that European country's rules online to check that you're compliant and within their rules and regulations. I know that some European countries can be a little bit of sticklers for having commercially packaged food and foods that have expiration dates, but in the past I have packed my own snacks and brought them on board on my European flights, and I personally have never had a problem, but the rules could have changed since the pandemic. You just want to make sure you're covering all your bases. The third and final rule that I want to discuss before we get started are luggage rules. Make sure you know your airline's luggage rules. Every airline has different rules regarding luggage, size, dimension, weight, personal item versus carry-on, personal item and carry-on. So you just wanna make sure that you know which airline you're traveling with and what their rules and regulations say. You're gonna wanna make sure that you are compliant within that, especially if you are packing and traveling with a carry-on only. It's very important. So here's why I wanna really harp on this rule in this video, because in my opinion, European airlines tend to be a lot stricter on luggage rules in comparison to American airlines. Now, I say this because every time I have been stuck with a surprise charge for my luggage, 
it has almost always been in Europe. And in my opinion, European airlines will check. They will weigh your bag, they will check the dimensions, they will ask you to put your bag in the bag sizer. I love to use these portable luggage scales. They have saved my travel life so many times. I absolutely love them. And when I lived in Europe, these things pretty much lived in my backpack and I would I, I don't think I ever would travel without them. You'll always know if you're on target, above, below, if you have a little room to bring stuff home. Really convenient, they're pretty inexpensive. So something else I wanted to quickly touch on is types of suitcases. So there seems to be this never-ending debate between soft-sided suitcases and hard shell suitcases. And the people that are in each camp tend to go pretty hard for their suitcases. I traveled with both, I have both, and I like both. I think the benefits to traveling with the soft-sided suitcase is that they often have these zipped pockets on the outside which you can easily throw in your boarding pass, in-flight entertainment, snacks for the plane, all these kinds of things that are in close and easy access. Some of them also have these expandable zippers so they can expand a little bit and still be within the airline's size dimensions and regulations. A lot of them, because they're soft, they're squishy. You can kind of manipulate and squish things down a little bit to create a little bit more space for yourself. Some of the advantages to a hard shell suitcase is that I find that I'm pretty much always compliant and within my airline's luggage rules and regulations without question, because there's no squishing. So I find that I tend to get hassled a little bit less. I tend to worry a little bit less whether my bag is gonna fit in the overhead compartment or whether they're gonna stop me and tell me to, you know, check my bag in the bag sizer. I don't worry about that so much when I'm carrying a hard shell suitcase. I also love the fact that a lot of them have that 360 spin wheels. I also find them to be a lot easier to clean. And my number one thing about bringing a hard shell suitcase is that I find them to be a lot easier to protect against things like bed bugs. And that's something we'll have to talk about in another video. The choice really is yours. And like I said, I have both. I've traveled with both. I do think I tend to lean a little bit more towards the hard shell suitcase. I am personally a very big fan of away suitcases. I know they're not the cheapest. They're really durable and they're really easy to clean. Another luggage company I also really like is Samsonite. But if you're shopping around and looking for options for good carry-on suitcases, I will link a couple of options down below that I really enjoy. The choice is totally up to you and whatever you're more comfortable with. As we continue on to talk about traveling and packing a carry-on only for a longer trip, particularly to Europe, there are a couple things that we should all consider before we even start packing. One of those things is the weather. So the weather in your European destination is going to greatly affect not only how you pack, but what you pack. Research and be prepared for the high and low temperatures of the city or cities that you're visiting. That way you can be sure that you're bringing the appropriate clothing, shoes, and accessories so you can be comfortable for your trip. Another thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is the amenities. Knowing the amenities and the things that you have access to on your trip is gonna be really important. Are you gonna have access to a washing machine? If you're traveling during summer, is there air conditioning? If you're traveling during winter, what are the heating options? These are things that you're gonna to wanna to consider first as you're planning your trip and booking your accommodation, and then secondly, as you're packing and preparing for your trip. And the last thing I wanted to quickly touch on is self-awareness. I know it sounds really cheesy, but honestly, you know yourself better than anyone. You are traveling for a month, five weeks, six weeks. What are the things that you are willing to compromise to pack a carry-on only and travel a little bit lighter? Or things that you're like, you know what? I'm not gonna compromise on this. If that means, you know what, I just need to check a bag, then I just need to check a bag. I think everybody has those things that they're a little bit more particular about, and that's okay. Knowing these things are gonna make your packing process so much easier. So I'll use myself as an example. One of the things that I think I can be a little bit more particular about is my hair struggled a lot with my hair in my teenage years and when I was in high school. I finally feel like I have nailed down a system of products that I love. I have systems and routines and things in place for my hair, especially when I travel. And I have to make contingency plans for myself in order to pack the appropriate things, to know the hairstyles that are gonna make me feel beautiful. For you, it may be fitness. For someone else, it may be food restrictions. For someone else, it may be their clothing. Try to figure out ways in which you can plan according to that. So let's talk about clothing. Resist Resist the urge to pack everything in the kitchen sink. I know, I know it's really hard. We all have the urge to want to bring a lot of stuff, partly because I think we want to be prepared and we want options. We want to actively fight against that. You cut back and wash your clothes. Go to a laundromat if you have to. Really have an intentional thought about 
each item and article of clothing that you're bringing. Are you really going to wear it? Can you layer it with other pieces? Can you mix and match it with different things? Is it machine or hand washable? And make sure that every item you have serves a purpose and it deserves that coveted spot in your suitcase. I would also avoid bringing any high maintenance items. What I mean by that is any article of clothing or accessory that has a lot of sentimental value, things that can only be dry cleaned. Nobody has time for that on a trip or you know that if you get a stain on it or ripped or destroyed in any way, you're gonna be upset. Those I would consider high maintenance items. So normally when I'm packing light and I'm packing a carry-on only, I personally like to plan outfits and I think about outfits and activities versus the length of my trip. But when we're talking about packing a carry-on for a longer trip, especially to Europe, especially for something that's a month, five weeks, six weeks, I think it is important to consider the length. To get the best of both worlds, I would consider building and packing a travel capsule wardrobe. So if you aren't familiar with what a capsule wardrobe is, so it is a small collection of clothing and accessories that are designed and built to be mixed and matched and worn together. This is something that minimalists have been raving about for years. You can pack light without compromising on your personal style and also having a variety of versatile options. I think these capsule wardrobes are great also because it kind of cuts back on that decision fatigue. Another thing with clothing to consider when you're packing light, especially for a longer trip, is one-stop outfits. I will never stop raving about how much I love one-stop outfits. These are your dresses, rompers, jumpsuits. They save a lot of time in trying to pack an outfit and decide what to wear. They go with so many different things. You can wear them multiple times and you can mix and match. You're also gonna wanna consider bringing clothing with lightweight materials like cotton, nylon, linen, especially in summer. These materials are great for hand washing, especially if you wanna re-wear these items multiple times and they dry so much faster. So we've talked about the idea of bringing a travel capsule wardrobe, mixing and matching using your one-stop outfits. Another thing you may want to consider, especially if you're traveling during winter, is layering. I know you want to bring different sweater options, different coat options, but resist the urge of bringing more stuff. Instead, layer. Instead of packing four heavy sweaters, maybe pack one or two sweaters and make sure you're packing long sleeve shirts or turtlenecks that you can layer with different pieces. That way you're comfortable, you're packing light, and you're staying warm on your trip. And you want to plan for comfort. If you have clothing items that are a little pinchy on the side, a little tight on the shoulder, tucking and moving things. Are they cute? Yes. Do they belong in your wardrobe? Sure. But do you need to bring them traveling on a longer trip? No. So let's talk shoes. There isn't a ton that I want to say about shoes except limit them. Limit them as much as you can and always wear your bulkiest and heaviest shoes on the plane. So test out your shoes with your outfits. Just like what I was saying with clothing and bringing only bringing clothing that you're comfortable in, the same applies with shoes. Especially since my guess would be if you are traveling on a longer trip to Europe, you're probably going to be doing a lot of walking, a lot of public transportation, on and off buses and trains, onto toiletries, hair, skin, and makeup. So I said this in my last packing video and I'll say it again, scale it back. If you have a seven step nighttime routine, you may want to reduce that down to four step nighttime routine. And if you are nervous about skipping steps in your routine, what I have done in the past is try out my travel skincare routine at home for a couple of days before I travel. This is also another really good tip for hair. If you know that you want to bring less products when you're traveling, try new hairstyles, try them all out before you travel. That way when you're actually traveling, not only are you cutting back on the time it takes to do your hair, but you're also trying things out and seeing how they look. Just like you create a routine at home, you also want to adjust and have a routine for travel. So stock up on samples and travel size containers and portions of your favorite products. If it's a popular brand, then most likely they have a travel size option for you. Another thing that you can do if you're not super picky about the brands and the products that you're using is pick up a couple of these items when you're traveling for a longer trip. So when you get to Europe, the first thing that you may do is hit up a drugstore so you can buy full-size toothpaste, shampoo, face wash, conditioner. It's up to you. If you're not particular and super fussy, especially if you're staying for longer than a month, feel free to do that. Accessorize. Consider accessories, especially hair accessories like hats, bandanas, claws. I love hair claws. So for my black women, also consider protective styling. This may be a time where you want to consider getting braids or doing any other kind of protective styling 
styling for your hair so that you don't have to worry about it on your trip. My friend Shannon is a great example of this. When we went on a trip to Miami, we were only there for the weekend, but she got braids before we went because she knew my hair is not gonna hold up. All this humidity looked beautiful. It worked for her. She was able to pack light and she didn't have to bring a mountain of products for her hair because she got protective styling for her trip. So that's something you may wanna consider. It may not be for you, but I just wanna throw it out there. Electronics. So electronics can be bulky. You really wanna limit that bulkiness. So like I've been saying this entire video to cut back, maybe bring a Kindle, maybe bring an e-reader. Instead of bringing that heavy DSLR camera that you love so much, stick to your phone or bring a small point and shoot. When it comes to electronics, I would absolutely just bring the necessities. European plug adapters are a must for traveling to Europe. These kind are my favorite to bring because they're lightweight, they're small, bring multiple ones without weighing down your suitcase. And of course, I'll link these down in the description box below. And lastly, here's a little travel food for thought. These are just some rapid fire things that I'm throwing out here to think about. I personally would avoid bringing things like umbrellas, bath towels, and expensive sunglasses. Ditch your heavy purse for a crossbody bag. I always say this, but try to make sure you're leaving a little bit of room for bringing stuff home if you want to. Tell your friends and family that you are packing light. I say this because I do know that sometimes when you travel, especially on longer trips, sometimes there is this pressure and this expectation to bring a lot of gifts home for friends. If you work in an office, and you work in a hospital, teacher, you work in a school, feel like there's this unspoken expectation and pressure to bring gifts for the office. Let people know that you are packing light. Maybe you do bring gifts and you do bring them something. Maybe it's something light and small like a fridge magnet. If you feel like you need Need a little bit more help and guidance in packing your carry-on only for your longer trips, here are a couple of things. Definitely check out the written blog post version of this video on my blog. I will link that in the description box below. I've also created a free travel packing checklist that goes along with this video that you can download and print and use as you're packing so that you make sure you're not forgetting anything, you're ready to go while you're packing. Another thing is right now, I'm going to pack and prepare a carry-on suitcase as if I am going to Europe for six weeks. I am going to pack as if I'm going for summer. But if you wanna see what this looks like in live action, keep watching, cause I'm gonna do it right now. I, I am going to be packing one pair of jeans, one pair of denim shorts, and a denim skirt. For tops, I'm packing one lightweight button down and four lightweight cotton t-shirts. Also packing one lightweight linen dress, another lightweight cotton dress, and one jumpsuit. I really would love to bring this dress, but it's dry clean only, so that's a no. Bringing a heavy sweater for the plane and any cold restaurants. For undergarments, I'm bringing 12 pairs of underwear and two socks. Also bringing one bathing suit. PJs, I'm bringing two pairs. A pair of shorts, a lightweight cotton tee, and one lightweight cotton dress. For shoes, I'm keeping it as simple as possible. My favorite comfy sneakers, Data Stan Smiths, a light pair of Mary Janes, and these light woven sandals. For toiletries, I'm bringing face wash, face exfoliator, daytime moisturizer, nighttime moisturizer, nighttime serum, deodorant, razor, one extra blade, toothbrush, toothpaste, floss, and lip balm. Also bringing some African black soap and a washcloth. Keeping it simple for the hair, conditioner I plan to stretch out, curl cream, some claws, and a hair wrap. For makeup, I'm bringing oil blotting sheets, tinted face oil, concealer, lip and cheek tint, liquid cheek tint blush, two makeup brushes, brow gel, mascara, liquid eyeliner, eyelash curler, light lipstick, and two other pigmented lipsticks. For electronics, I'm bringing my iPad and its charger, a point and shoot and its charger, this nifty thing that helps me get photos from my camera to my phone, and my Kindle and its charger. I'm also bringing four European adapters, a reusable water bottle, this bag I use for dirty clothes, cheap sunglasses, fanny pack, and foldable canvas bag. I'm bringing two fabric masks, so with everything laid out, I first like to take out the outfit I'm traveling in. Then I'm packing up my toiletries. Then packing my electronics. My makeup. Underwear and socks. Shoes. 
tops, bottoms, jumpsuits, and dresses, PJs and swimsuit, and that's it. Easy peasy. Everything you see that's left, like the luggage scale, my camera, it's all gonna go in my personal item. Hope you enjoyed. Please go ahead and like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that notification bell so you know when I have a new upload. And also comment below and let me know the longest trip that you have ever packed carry on only. Also, let's be friends on social media. Follow me on Instagram. We do a ton of fun stuff over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.